Welcome to the Venari podcast. I'm Tim Hartnell. And in this episode, I'll be speaking with Jawad Bizbiz. Jawad is Global Vice President of Marketing Partnerships at Ball Corporation with over 25 years in marketing with the likes of Coca-Cola, P&G, Luxottica and other brands. It's great to be hearing from him today. Jawad, a warm welcome. Uh, it's great to have you on and uh, good to be talking with you again. Good to meet you, Tim. In today's episode, we're going to be talking uh, about marketing trends within packaging, talent acquisition strategy, and a few of Jawad's highlights from his career to date. Jawad, to kick us off, who are Ball Corporation and uh, how have you seen the shift in marketing agendas as companies are now focused more than ever on sustainable packaging? Yeah, so Ball Corporation is a global market leader in sustainable packaging, uh, mostly aluminum. Uh, the core business is basically uh, beverage aluminum packaging, but the company also has a, a CPG business that works with the likes of Unilever and PNG on uh, household and personal care aluminum packaging, an aerospace business that builds sensors and uh, mirrors for satellites. Uh, now, the commonality between those businesses is really sustainability. How can we advance the sustainability agenda? Uh, so if you look at aerospace, a lot of those satellites are used to monitor the impact of climate change and global warming all the way to microplastic on the oceans. In terms of, uh, you know, the shift I'm seeing with customers on the marketing agenda, um, uh, I would say more and more customers are embracing sustainable packaging, indeed 80% of uh, new, uh, especially on the beverage space, uh, whether it's startup or companies that are being created, are launching with uh, with Alumina uh, because it's the best uh, uh, container out there when it comes to recycling and sustainability, especially on the water space. So the water space has been a space that has been commoditized for years. And uh, we're seeing a lot of organization now help, trying to premiumize that space launching with uh, aluminum bottles uh, that are refillable, uh, that can be reusable, but also, you know, position the brand in a more premium way. Uh, and that's mostly where the marketing innovation is happening. So having been in marketing for over 25 years now, you've worked with some great brands, as we mentioned earlier in the podcast. How have you seen the sort of shift uh, in different team dynamics? And, and from a talent acquisition strategy perspective, how do you ensure you get and build the best team possible? So, so for me, it's what is the culture that you want to set up? And what I learned uh, over the last few years, uh, and I think more and more big or large organization, whether it's a PNG or a Lever or Coke or Pepsi or ABI, are trying to put that kind of culture, breaking the silos and becoming more entrepreneurial because you have a lot of competition out there. You have a lot of entrepreneurs that are disrupting the categories they are playing in. And the best way to react to that, obviously, is to build also an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial culture in the organization. So that's the culture I, I try to set up is people that are entrepreneurial, that are scrappy, that are not afraid to take risks and fail and learn from it. I always say, like, one day I might be a brand manager. The other day I'm a head of marketing. One day you're doing strategy. The other day you're doing execution. Uh, but most importantly, people that are there for more just a paycheck. Uh, they're there because they believe in the company's mission in the purpose so it's important that people believe in the company's mission because uh, you know you're gonna work hard uh, uh a lot of the brands have been in our challenger brand and you need to uh punch above your weight so you gotta be able to love and what you do and love what the company is trying to achieve so what skills and experience have you valued most in your career today yeah, I mean, I, I had a global career, so I'm originally from Morocco. That's that's where I grew up, uh, and, and then I, I I I went to college in France, and I worked around Africa and Middle East, and and then uh, the U.S. So, and I travel all around from Latin America to Asia. So, uh, I would say the, the one skill that is critical when you have a, a global business or a global career, or you work across multiple culture and markets is empathy. Uh, the ability not only to uh, understand different perspective, but to be able to change your own, because uh, there is no right and wrong, there is no black and white, there's a lot of gray. What is probably, you know, the way of doing business in the West is very different from the way you do business in the East. And you gotta be able to understand those sometimes competing perspectives uh, and contradictory point of views and be able to change your own 
and 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 be able also to kind of embrace some vulnerability there and say hey i don't know have all the answers let's give it a try let's try something different let's let's do it in a way that probably i don't feel as comfortable but mm -hmm. i think it's fine and that's how you learn so that's that will be the first one is that active listening and ability to get different competing perspectives and uh, try something new uh, that may work in some market, but probably not in all markets. That's super great to hear that. And then, then that brings us on to our final question. So in 2023, big year ahead of us, are there any highlights that you've got that are coming up uh, uh, and that are on the horizon for Bull? Yeah, I, I think 2023 is going to be a difficult year for, for a lot of uh, organization because there is all the talk around recession. And I listened to some of uh, our customers earning calls last week and uh, they, they are going into this year being conservative on volume. Uh, they've already taken a lot of price increases last year. They, they they expect to take some additional this year, given inflation. So I think, you know, in the short term, it's going to be uh, a difficult year across this, the supply chain. And we are part of that supply chain. But I would say what I'm excited about is over the long term, uh, we are, uh, the corporation is playing within uh, a big macro trend or big tailwind, which is, uh, again, sustainability. And the organization that play within that space are going to thrive because more and more consumers are demanding products that are more sustainable and are voting with their wallet by buying products that are better for the environment. But they are also, you know, more informed. So they, they see the greenwashing. So they see organizations that are making claims that may not be correct. So as long as you are, have a story uh, that is authentic, uh, that is backed by data, uh, which is the case in in you know uh, aluminum packaging, which is you know again the highest recycled container out there, whether for beverages or for personal care uh, CPG goods. And then you tell that story consistently, and you work with your customers to make sure that they they understand the value that comes with it. Uh, then you're there for the long term. So it's a it's a long term business, and that's what uh, what's mostly exciting is that. This is only going to get better and bigger, and you're going to see more organization moving from lower recycling containers to higher recycling type of packaging, uh, and that's going to kind of keep growing the business. And those that don't are going to be left behind, uh, or customers are just, again, going to vote with their wallet and change uh, their behavior. Uh, I think the, the example of aluminum cups which was launched a couple of years ago to replace the kind of solo plastic caps that we know here in the US that have a super low recycling rate. Only 5% of that plastic get recycled, 95% get thrown in landfill or incinerated. Eventually, as we tell that story, more and more people will switch to, uh, to aluminum to better recycled type of uh, containers and packaging. And uh, we just need to make sure that, you know, we keep driving that awareness and we keep getting people to try it. And we keep uh, building a community of super fun and ambassadors and influencers. And over the long term, that's what I'm most excited about. This is a growth business. So Duad, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Um, look forward to catching up with you very soon. Thank you for having me. Have a good rest of your day.